lesson time. Lesson time is here again. Here we go. Module six, lesson three. What are we doing? Boom. That's what we're doing. Whoa, that's a lot. No, it's not. We're going to represent mixed numbers. Remember mixed numbers? We have a whole number and a fraction, right? Okay. But wait, we're doing decimals. Oh, we'll get there. With units of tens, ones, and tenths. So we're not going out to hundredths. We're not going up to hundreds, just tens, ones, and tenths. We'll use that with uh, place value disks. That's how we'll represent those missed numbers. We'll also do it on the number line and, importantly, in expanded form. So let's do that. All right. So warming up here, write the decimal or fraction. So say this fraction, it is, yes, one-tenth. All right. How would we write that as a decimal? 0 0.1, although we'd say one-tenth. So remember that distinction between how we say it and how we write it. What's that fraction? Two-tenths, good. As a decimal, 0 0.2. Two-tenths equals two-tenths. Fraction, seven-tenths. And we'd write that as 0 0.7. We'd say seven-tenths, though, reading it as a math number. I must emphasize that. Fraction. Nine tenths, great, and that's right, 0 0.9. Nine tenths equals nine tenths. Oh, now we're doing it in reverse again. So we have the decimal 0 0.3, which we'd read as three tenths. So as a fraction, we'd write also three tenths, amazing. Here we have the decimal 0 0.4, which we'd read as four tenths, a four in the tenths place. So as a fraction, we'd write it as sorry, four tenths, great. And now we have the decimal 0 0.8, right? Eight tenths is what we'd say. So as a fraction, it's eight tenths. Sorry, I can't make this any easier. All right, here we have the decimal six tenths, a six in the tenths place. So as a fraction, we'd write six tenths. Great. Ah, there's an interesting fraction. We did do this one yesterday, do you recall? That's 10 tenths. What would that be as a decimal? 1.0 is what we'd write, and we could say 10 tenths because, again, look, there's the number 10. Ignore the decimal point for a moment. There's a number 10, which ends in the tenths place. Uh, so it's 10 tenths, which, of course, is equal to 1. Beauteous. Let's count by tenths. Ready? We're going to start from 0 tenths. 0 tenths, 1 tenth, 2 tenths, 3 tenths, 4 tenths, 5 tenths, 6 tenths, 7 tenths, 8 tenths, 9 tenths and 10 tenths, which equals 1. And now let's do it again in a decimal form. 0 tenths is still what we'd say there. I know it's weird, but 0 tenths. Then 1 tenth, 2 tenths, 3 tenths, 4 tenths, 5 tenths, 6 tenths, 7 tenths, 8 tenths, 9 tenths, and 10 tenths, also known as 1. Nice job. Ah, go have a donut. No, just kidding. Well, if you want. All right. So now we're going to skip count by five tenths. Here we go. We're starting from zero tenths, going to five tenths, ten tenths, fifteen tenths. Ah, now we're into improper fraction land, right? Twenty tenths, twenty-five tenths, thirty tenths, thirty-five tenths, forty tenths, forty-five tenths, fifty tenths. Okay, now you probably noticed here and remembering from fraction land that when we have things like 10 tenths and 20 tenths and even 0 tenths, those have whole number equivalents. So let's do it that way, see? We're going to skip count by 5 tenths, but say the whole numbers. So we'll start with 0, 5 tenths, 1, 15 tenths, 2, 25 tenths, 3, 35 tenths, four, 45 tenths, five. That's kind of weird, isn't it? Well, uh, combobulate the brain there. Um, but do you see, of course, yeah, that th 30 tenths equals three. And uh, just to relate this to money, a tenth of a dollar is a dime. If you have no dimes, you got no money. <laughs> if you have 10 dimes, you have one dollar. If you have 20 dimes, you have two dollars. If you have 30 dimes, you have three dollars. Forty dimes is four dollars. Fifty dimes would be five dollars. Lucky you with your five dollars. Ed! Ed is, has a hankering for some fish. <laughs> Go for it, Ed. He bought four pieces of salmon. Say it with me. 
salmon. It has a silent L. English is the funkiest language ever, sorry. But it's salmon. And you can look up the etymology of that and why we don't pronounce the L. It's actually kind of interesting. But Ed bought four pieces of salmon weighing a total of two kilograms. There's a decent amount of fish there. And he's either in a fish frenzy or he's got a big family. One piece weighed four tenths kilogram, and two of the pieces weighed five tenths kilogram each. What was the weight of the fourth piece of salmon? Okay, so let's draw this bad boy out. So um, we have a total here, right? A total, the two kilograms. So our tape is going to be the whole thing is two kilograms. And then we have four pieces. So one, two, three, four partitions within that tape. We know that first one is four tenths kilogram, and then two are five tenths kilogram each, which leaves us with W for weight, trying to find the fourth piece of salmon. And you can probably see what do we need to do. Yeah, we need to put these together. That's right, and this ends up becoming a straightforward part of the whole uh, part of the whole subtraction question, right? So we need to put together these three pieces first. Four and five and five. Okay, so that's 14 tenths. We could also look at it and say, hey, these make one, don't they? Five tenths and five tenths is ten tenths, which is one with the four tenths. So we end up with one and four tenths. Or if you did 14 tenths, you would then take out the 10 tenths at that point. Either way works. Um, and now we're going to take the two t kilograms, the whole weight of all the fishies, fishy, fishy, fish, and subtract the three that we know to find the unknown one. And I'm not going to go through the, all the logic of how to do this because we already did this back in fraction land. Um, so we end up, um, well, here, I'll give you a little bit. Um, the, ten t the two we decompose as one whole and 10 tenths. And then 10 tenths minus 4 tenths leaves 6 tenths. And of course, 1 minus 1 is 0. So we end up with 6 tenths is the difference there. And then you need yourself a cute little statement saying, oh, the weight is 6 tenths kilogram. The fourth piece of salmon weighed 6 tenths kilogram. Solved. Ed can now start cooking. All right, while Ed cooks that, we are going to make groups of 10 tenths to rename, rename as ones and write the number in decimal form. Well, what does that mean? Let's look at it. So, here we go. One whole, I can decompose as 10 tenths. And here again, one whole decomposed as 10 tenths. And then just hanging out here, randomly I have another 1 tenth. Okay, so questions. How many tenths, the 0 0.1, how many tenths do we have here? Well, 10. 20, and one more makes 21. So have they been grouped in tens? Everything with decimals is all about the powers of 10. So there's 10, there's 10, they've been grouped in 10. What is the whole decimal number? Well, we have one whole, another one whole, and then one tenth down there. So it's two and one tenth, excellent. How many more tenths would we need to get to the next whole number? So from two and one tenths, what's the next whole number? Three, and that's a difference of how many tenths? Very good, hopefully you see that it's nine tenths. Now, hopping right on here. Um, so uh, let me go back for a quick second. So we're done with this, the 10 tenths renamed as one. Okay, so we had 21 tenths and rename them as ones, wrote the number in decimal form, which is two and one tenth. All right, so now, now we'll move on. All right, so now we're gonna do mixed numbers with tens, ones, and tenths in expanded form. Don't overthink this. What is the value of this disc? It says it right there. Say that number, 10. Okay, good. All right, what's the value of these discs? Well, 10, 20, 30, 40. How would we write this as a multiplication sentence? Well, we have all right, we have 10 four times here, right? So we'd say four times 10 is 40. Great, what we just did was we took 40 and put it in expanded form, four times 10. Boom, beauteous. Okay, so what's the total value now? Well, we added in 
a one disk and a one disk, a one disk and a one disk make a two disk, right? So how do we uh, write that out as multiplication here for the, the two, adding it together with this in expanded form? Well, we first take what we started with. Okay, so we have 42 now. So it's four times 10, we already did that, right? And how many ones? How many times do you see one here? You see one two times, so two times one. And just as a matter of doing it all the same way and how it's conventionally done, I always put the place value second. So I would not write this as 10 times four and one times two, um, just so we're all doing it the same way, we don't get confused. So I always put the place value second. So I'm always going to write 4 times 10 plus 2 times 1. And then we'll go further out, but we'll get there when we get there. All right. Whoa, here we are. We are there. What's the value now? Well, how many one-tenths do I have? You see one-tenth there how many times? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yes, good. Okay, so same process. So there's the number now. Look, 42 and 6 tenths. 40 two and six tenths. Beautiful, huh? So we already know how to write out that uh, 40 in expanded form. We're going to start in the tens place. It's four times 10. Adding to that, we already know how to do the ones place, right? Two times one. And now the tenths. So we know a tenth is written as 0 0.1. How many do we have? Six of them. So six times one tenth. And that's what it looks like. 6 times 0 0.1 is how we'd write it. Um, good? All right? Beautiful. All right. What would we have to change here to write this in fractional form? Well, over with the 42 and 6 tenths, we just write that as a mixed number. 42 and 6 tenths. And then this is all going to stay the same, right? These are whole numbers. So there's nothing to change here with all these numbers because... They're whole numbers. There's no fractional form. But here, it's one-tenth, so would you write that as a fraction as? Can you dig it? One-tenth. So that is indeed is what it looked like. Mixed number, 42 and six-tenths. And the only other thing that changes here in fractional form is the one-tenth decimal is written as one-tenth fraction. Yeah, how's that? All right, let's do some more. This is called decimal expanded form, although I've seen it also written as expanded decimal form, so same thing. Uh, but more commonly decimal expanded form. And how about this one? <laughs> You're quick. Fraction expanded form. All right. So now we're going to do uh, something similar, but with a number line. Mixed numbers, ones and tenths. Leaving the tens place out of it for the moment. All right. So, woo, look at that. It's a number line. Where are we going to put four and one tenth? Well, obviously, one, two, three, Four, and then one more little line would be four and one tenth. Boom, there it is. The red dot meets the red dot. Hello, Dad. I'm bouncing on your belly. Oh, sorry. Um, go back. Uh, how would we write that as a decimal? Oh, you already saw it. Okay, all right. Uh, four and one tenth. 4.1 is what we'd write. How would we write that as a mixed number? In other words, as a fraction form. Four and one tenth. See, so what we say in decimal is what we write in fraction as well. How would we write this now in expanded decimal form? Well, we have a four in the ones place and a one in the tenths place. So four times one, the place it's in, and then the one here times, what place is it in? Tenths. So four times one, one times one tenth, that's what it would look like. Four and one tenth equals four times one plus one times one tenth. Woo! How about expanded fraction form? Nah. <laughs> it's going to be the same as before, right? Same thing. Only difference is this 4 and 1 tenth will be written as 4 and 1 tenth. Yes, I know I'm saying the same thing twice. That's how it works. 4 and 1 tenth, we'd write in fraction form as 4 and 1 tenth. 1 tenth here, we'd write as 1 tenth in fraction form. So it looks like this. 4 and 1 tenth equals the 4 times 1 stays the same. They're whole numbers. Plus one times one tenth in fraction form. Can you dig it? Yes, you can. All right. How much more do we need to get to the next whole number? Well, we could see it's five here. If you really wanted to, you could go boing, 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 boing along the number line and count, but you know what's the difference. How many more tenths do we need from four and one tenth to get to essentially four and ten tenths? 
right? We need nine tenths more. Now, we're going to do the same with another number. We're going to place three and eight tenths on the number line, write it in decimal and fraction form, decimal and fraction expanded form, and then figure out how much more to make the next whole number. Okay, so I know that's a lot to do. So you want to pause the video here and do all that and then unpause it and we'll go over it together. Okay, so go ahead and pause now. Yeah, I knew you weren't going to. You just want to do it together. Okay, here we go. Or maybe you did. Here's, here's, all, the, here's all that we're looking for here. Here's three and eight tenths on the number line in a decimal form, three and eight tenths which is three in the ones place and an eight in the tenths place. Same thing here as a mixed number, three and eight tenths, which is a three in the ones place and eight in the one tenths place, so to speak. And we would need how much more to get to four? Well, you can actually hop along your happy little hum number line here, humber line, <laughs> one, two tenths more to get to the four. Beautiful, you got it. And then you are looking at your happy doodly little problem set. You see you're doing the same thing here, uh, writing it as ones and tenths. So in other words, with this one here, here's 10 tenths, you would condense that into one. Here's 10 tenths, you condense that into one. And the eight tenths here, you would just basically copy the same as eight tenths. The point is 10 tenths is one, 10 tenths is one, and then another eight tenths. And don't forget the question, how much more is needed to get to three? Um, same thing here, uh, similar here, except that now you're going to bust it out into uh, expanded form, both as fraction and decimal. And note, again, when you look at here in this example that they do for you, the only difference is going to be this is a mixed number and this is a decimal number. This is a fraction one-tenth, this is a decimal one-tenth. So you'll do that for the rest of the examples like that. This chart, you're going to be seeing several of these, and I believe it appears on the, uh, the end of module assessment and all, so uh, learn to love it. So you just fill in the blanks here, like this first one you're given three and nine tenths, write it as a decimal, put it into expanded form, and they give you the choice of fraction or decimal. With my class, I make them do both, <laughs> but uh, I guess you get to choose because you're doing it here. Lucky you. Um, and then put the dot on the number line for three and nine tenths. Now in this one, notice, all they give you is the dot on the number line. Notice between 17 and 18. So it's gonna be 17 and so many tenths, which you write as a decimal fraction, expanded form. And then of course here, and then you need to know how much more to get from that 17 and however many tenths to the next whole number, which is 18. Here they give it to you in expanded form, fraction, uh, so I would write the mixed number first, decimal from there, and note then on the number line, and on this first number line as well, you have to put in the whole numbers. For example, three and nine tenths up here is between what and what? Between three and four, okay? And so you have to do that with this one, this one, this one. You have to label the ends of the number line. So there's a lot to do on this one. So be patient, take your time. If you get done with B and you're like, I can't take any more. Do what I do, like this, watch. That's right, I'm going for a walk. Going for a little walk. Go look out the window, make some tea, and then come back and get back to work, because that helps you. All right, and then the exit ticket is pretty much the same thing. So I'm not going to just abbreviated version. And then for the homework, of course, you want to head over to my homework time video for this lesson. And that concludes module six, lesson three, I hope you had at least half as much, oh, I hope you had five-tenths as much fun as I had because I love doing this. All right, and I'll see you next time. It is, once again, lesson time. Yeah.